Welcome pleasant parishioners and our partners of PG. We're thankful that you have decided to log on with us on today. Brothers and sisters, this is not intended to be uh, a lengthy sermon at all, uh, but this is just a motivational moment uh, because I just believe that it is important for the children of God and the believers in Christ Jesus uh, to engage uh, in worship uh, during a time of thanksgiving. Amen, 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 amen. With that being said, we just want to pause for a quick word of prayer. God, we thank you for this day that you have set aside for us to give you thanks. God, we know that every day, is a day of thanksgiving and God you've done so much for us to be thankful about and we just want to set aside this time uh, to show you that we are truly thankful. God we ask that you keep the members of Pleasant Green safe during this time uh, if they are traveling or even if they are in the city. God keep them from uh, harm and danger and God, we ask that you keep them from the coronavirus. In Jesus' name, we pray, and we pray that something is said that will stick uh, to their souls uh, that is of substance. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I pray that your uh, turkey has been based. I, I pray that your turkey has been stuffed. I, I pray that you've done everything that you have uh, said you was going to do or you had supposed to have done before today. I pray that your rolls have been buttered and that you're prepared to have a great Thanksgiving uh, Day feast. But before we feast on our physical food, let's have some spiritual food. So with that being said, let's go to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, uh, the fifth chapter, and we want to read the 18th verse. We want to read the 18th verse, and once we read this, we'll jump into the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter and the 18th verse reads like this. I'm reading the New International Version, and it says, Give thanks. In all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let me say that one more time. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I just want to use for a framework for the time that we share together a thorough thanksgiving. A thorough thanksgiving. What does it take to have a thorough thanksgiving? Brothers and sisters, I know the great debate concerning thanksgiving has often been whether or not to have a roasted turkey or a honey baked ham. Whether to have cranberry sauce or uh, giblet gravy with your dressing or to have potato pie or a chocolate cake to truly enjoy a thorough Thanksgiving Day spread. But the Apostle Paul seeks to give us a different perspective on what a thorough Thanksgiving really is. Pleasant parishioners, as we press past this presidently peculiar period in history, one begins to realize that it can be much easier to sulk about our disappointments, our hardships, and lockdowns than it is to search out what we can be thankful for even in the midst of corona, quarantine, and complication. Nevertheless, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have the ability through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, uh, to discipline our thoughts towards a posture uh, and a position of appreciativeness so that we can have a thorough thanksgiving. Many times in our human nature, 
we tend to be drawn toward pessimistic pity parties and instead of refocusing our minds on thanking God for God's goodness. As believers, we are to possess the mind of Christ. And in doing so, we press our thoughts towards God and not simply our own circumstances. Because our circumstances are only momentary, but God is eternal. Because we know that Christ is king even over the COVID season. Christ is king even over our circumstances that may be momentary. Nonetheless, uh, the discipline that moves us happens when we surrender our weaknesses, our worries, and our weariness to God and trust him to lead our thoughts toward a spirit of thankfulness. Brothers and sisters, trust God and God will move your thoughts toward a spirit of thankfulness. As we consider this text, the Apostle Paul is coaching the church at uh, Thessalonica to be constant in an inconsistent world. Although we cannot control the circumstances around us, we can't control the fluctuating economy, the pillar to post uh, political tug of war, the alternating relationships we endeavor to maintain, the rising price of living, the new and bizarre fads and fashions. You all know those skinny jeans. The, the vacillating climate changes, the erratic emotions that we even have and experience within our own selves. We can control uh, those things uh, uh, that are within, but we cannot control those things without. So brothers and sisters, because we cannot control those things that are on the outside, one of the things that we can control and one of the things that we can do is become consistent in our devotion to God. There are a few things in the text, I'll say a couple things in the text uh, that Paul suggests for us in order for us to have a thorough thanksgiving. There are a few things, if you just look at the text, uh, that Paul is suggesting to us to have a thorough thanksgiving. The text says, give thanks in all circumstances. I know that's hard for many of us to do is to give God thanks in all circumstances. I think uh, David says it like this. David says it, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises will continually be in my mouth. Brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to give God thanks in all circumstances because what the text says is that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. But one of the things that Paul is sharing with us is in order for us to enjoy a thorough thanksgiving and in order for us to give thanks in all circumstances, we cannot divorce verse 18 from the context in which it was shared. We cannot divorce verse 18 from verses 16 and 17. Verse 16 says, rejoice, rejoice. Uh, the Greek word here uh, for rejoice, it means to be filled with with joy. Brothers and sisters, it's important for us as believers to be filled with joy. Joy is something different than gladness. Joy 
is something different than happiness because happiness is contingent upon our circumstances, but joy, brothers and sisters, is within us. Rejoicing is an important part of the believer's diet. Rejoicing is an integral part of the believer's life. To rejoice always is to see the hand of God in whatever is happening and to remain certain of future deliverance by the hand of God. Without this conviction, joy would not be possible in the face of our present circumstances. Without joy, we could not have a conviction that God will deliver us even in the face of affliction. Without joy, we could not still praise God even in the midst of suffering and death. Without joy, we would have no hope for tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to rejoice. In, other, uh, in, in order for us, brothers and sisters, to have a thorough thanksgiving, you've got to learn how to rejoice. You've got to learn how to rejoice. You've got to learn how to have joy. Because one songwriter says that this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me and the world cannot take it away. Joy is something that the world cannot give you, but joy is something that you only get from God. The last thing that I share with you is, brothers and sisters, in order for us to have a thorough thanksgiving, you've got to learn how to pray. You've got to learn how to pray. The text says, Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Brothers and sisters, you've got to learn how to pray. When you come into the Thanksgiving season, when you sit down to uh, eat your Thanksgiving Day meal, brothers and sisters, You've got to begin your thanksgiving with a word of prayer. Somewhere I heard that every day is a day of thanksgiving. Therefore, every day we ought to begin with a word of prayer. And what the Apostle Paul means by pray without ceasing is that every believer ought to train in the discipline of prayer. All of us ought to train in the discipline of prayer. I've watched many uh, 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 videos where my friends and loved ones post on Facebook and I see people working out. They have a persistence in their workout. What I'm trying to share with you, brothers and sisters, that your prayer life ought to be an exercise that you practice Every day, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Prayer is a discipline and all of us as believers ought to train in prayer to have a thorough thanksgiving. Prayer is a discipline. Discipline requires persistence and persistence encompasses action. In other words, prayer is not simply words alone. Prayer also includes those things that we have asked God to do. But brothers and sisters, uh, we've got to get to the point and the place to that we not only pray for it, but we put actions behind our prayers. Granddaddy's theology would say you ought to put some prayer, uh, some shoes on your prayers. Pray without ceasing. Be persistent in prayer and keep going after what you are seeking. But most importantly, brothers and sisters, keep going after God in prayer. 
this are these are some of the ways that we can have a thorough Thanksgiving. First of all, what Thessalonians shares with us again, uh, brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to rejoice. Rejoicing in this context means that we have a joy on the inside. Second of all, we've got to learn how to pray. We've got to learn how to pray. We've got to learn how to pray. You've got to pray every day. You've got to move yourself to a discipline of prayer and a persistent prayer life. And then, brothers and sisters, once you uh, have, once you rejoice and once you have joy in your soul and once you pray, brothers and sisters, you are able now, uh, brothers and sisters, to give thanks in every situation. No matter what is going on in life, if you pray and if you have joy that God will give to you through a sincere and a devotional prayer life, God will enable you to be able to uh, celebrate and, and to have joy, brothers and sisters. God will enable you to be able to share in joy in all things, in all things. Brothers and sisters, we pray uh, that this helps you in your prayer life. It helps you in your devotion to God, and it also helps you to have a thorough uh, thanksgiving. I pray that your meal is great today. Say hello to the family for Pastor Letcher. And I pray that this word has been inspiring and I pray that this word has been encouraging and inspirational. But most of all, I pray that this word has been evoking, evoking you to live a life that is worthy in the sight of Christ. May God bless you and may God keep you.